<laughs> yep, that thumbnail was a clickbait. I'm sad to say that after five years at my primary job, I was laid off. It's just a tough situation, you know? I mean, not really sure how I'm gonna make the mortgage payment this month. A car payment is gonna fall behind. Not really sure how I'm gonna keep the lights on. And oh wait, I'm debt free with an emergency fund. I'll be fine. But if you wanna be fine too, I'm gonna tell you the top five things you need to do after being laid off. Stay tuned. I gotta, I gotta pick this up now. What is up, my fellow Money Minions? My name is Troy, also known as the dollar dude. What's happening with you? Welcome back to another video. And as all the money minions out there know, we talk personal finance and building a life full of financial freedom here, and we keep it as simple and as real world as possible. So if you're down with that and you're not yet a minion, hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification icon next to it so you don't miss a moment of my self-deprecating humor. That wasn't funny. Was that funny? That wasn't funny. So yeah, I got laid off. Fun times. The funnest. Can't you see the smile on my face? Have you ever seen someone get canned and have to do the walk of shame with a cardboard box? Or maybe it happened to you too. Were you stoic? Were you frantic? Did you peel out of the parking lot screaming at the top of your lungs every curse word in the book? Let me know down in the comments what happened and how you handled it. So yeah, right before the ban hammer hit, of course the CEO at my former company has to do his best to try to soften the blow, you know? Sort of like this. <laughs> oh man, oh, oh man, that is top shelf comedy right there. Man, Troy, you crazy. But seriously, this is a hard thing to go through. If this has also happened to you before in your life, then you know the next few weeks are absolutely crucial. Boom, you lost your primary source of income overnight. The plan you've been sticking to, expecting that money to keep coming in, <laughs> that's not gonna work anymore. So here are, in my opinion, the top five things you need to do after being laid off. Number one, don't panic. Take a deep breath, relax, collect yourself for a few days. Don't make any rash decisions. Don't move to Cancun and open up that vintage pottery shop you've always wanted. Don't drop everything to take a six month sabbatical to see the wonders of the world. Now's not the time for that. Seriously, for the next two or three days, just don't do anything. Your emotions are high. You're probably talking under your breath, thinking about how your vengeance will be swift and just and cold as the blackest winter's night. People don't make rational, mathematics-based decisions when that type of emotion is involved. Take a walk around the park, catch up on some of your favorite shows, spend time with the fam. You got some free time, right? Might as well use it. All right, got that out of your system? Feel better? Good. Now it's time to form a plan. Number two, consider filing for unemployment. I know, I know, some people are out there like, unemployment? Isn't that just an entitlement program? <laughs> Please, I have two doctorates and seven master's degrees and four of them are MBAs. This is just a minor setback. I certainly don't need the assistance of some entitlement program like unemployment benefits. <laughs> no. Yeah. Look, unemployment is a fund that your employer has paid a percentage into for years. This is literally what this is for. If you don't at least consider using it, you're willfully turning your back on money meant to help you for exactly this very purpose. Plus your first unemployment payment can take a long time to, to, to get to you. Several weeks, in fact. In the meantime, your car still requires gas and your body still needs food. I know, shocking. What if that job opportunity that Uncle Cletus got lined up for you don't work out? That's probably another two weeks before you can line up another interview, and it's probably another two weeks without your primary source of income. I can see you starting to reach for that credit card. No, 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 no. Step away from the plastic. So if you're on the fence about filing, fall off the fence and file. It's gonna take a while anyway, might as well get started. If you're getting a severance, good for you. You've still got the right to file unless you signed something when you got hired saying you wouldn't. This is why you gotta read the fine print. No one ever really thinks about what happens if you get laid off while you're getting hired. The unemployment office will factor your severance pay into your unemployment benefits, so don't feel like you're cheating or playing both sides if you've got a severance. Number three, roll over your 401k to an IRA. So if you've been at your job for a while and you've elected to auto-contribute pre-tax dollars to a 401k, Chances are you've got a nice chunk of change in there, but you lose your job, so what are you gonna do? Leave that cash behind? No one gets left behind. And I'm not gonna touch that money for years anyway. What's so bad about leaving it with my former employer? Four simple words. You don't work there. Remember that cardboard box I gave you to pack your stuff in? 
Yeah. That means you probably got to deal with HR to get access to change stuff, and you're not pulling in a regular paycheck to make easy contributions anymore, and the fees are astronomical compared to a regular brokerage. It's all the disadvantages of a 401k with almost none of the benefits. Get that money out of there. What you're going to want to do as soon as you can is called a direct IRA rollover meaning that cash gets moved out of the 401k into a traditional IRA, directly from financial institution to financial institution. That money never touches your hands. This is a good thing because you touching that money is one of the dumbest financial moves you could possibly make. Why? Because if it's paid directly to you, the IRS has to hold 20% of it for federal taxes. You're required by law to deposit the full amount into your new IRA within 60 days in order to avoid a tax penalty, including the 20% that, oh, by the way, you don't have remember what yeah you would have to make up that 20 percent using money from somewhere else see why this is just beyond dumb be smart a direct rollover is the way to go that money is lava don't touch it now it's possible your old 401k provider will charge you a fee to do their part of the rollover not fun i know hey it happened to me. The fee with my old 401k provider was $125, which I had to pay. If you think about it, me being laid off cost me uh 125 bucks, which is really really messed up but it's worth it to make sure you've got a clean break from your former employer and to open up your cash in the entire market instead of being limited to whatever your provider thought you were worthy of investing in number four reevaluate your budget oh this one's painful what a lot of people do when they lose their job is they make zero changes to their budget because they just know they'll get a job fairly soon why should they have to change after all this is the lifestyle to which they have been accustomed yeah no get your monthly budget out right now do it See that nice big number right at the top, probably in green? Yeah, that one. Put a big fat zero right there. This is real life, it's time to get real serious. You just lost your primary source of income and you gotta deal with that. If your budget is an Excel spreadsheet, hopefully you got your formula set up right and all those negative numbers you now see in bold red will scare you into making some much needed budgetary changes. So what do you gotta do? Make the numbers work with the income you have. If you haven't got any additional income from a working spouse or a side gig, then you gotta put your emergency fund into play. Cause you've got one, right? Come on, this is what we train for, money minions. Cut your budget down to the absolute essentials. No contributions to that vacation sinking fund. No new clothes unless you need them for interviews. No eating out, nothing. You're in scorched earth mode until you get your income back up. Work that budget until those negative numbers in red disappear. That's called having a plan. And a plan is your best friend. He's your running dog in troubled times. Good old Mr. Plan, he's got your back. Number five, and probably the most overlooked. Go see your doctor. Forgot about that one, huh? I don't blame you. I know your healthcare is probably the last thing you want to think about right now, but it's super important. You'll probably still have insurance coverage until the end of the month, maybe longer, so go ahead and get any doctor's visits, dental checkups, and eye exams in while you still have coverage. You can also choose to extend your coverage through the federal program COBRA. I'll leave a link down in the description in case you want to learn more about that. Stay healthy, because the last thing you need is a medical emergency while your income is on break. Money Minions don't go out like that. And this one is done, guys. Hit the like button if you liked it, or if you're not yet a Minion, subscribe Subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. We'd love to have you. So until next time, my fellow Money Minions, my name is Troy, and I will see you guys next time.